I've been wanting to do a little project with this type of effect for quite a while. Um, this effect is called the Pepper's Ghost, and it's a really uh, popular effect, um, originally born out of the theater, where they would reflect an actor off stage onto a piece of glass on stage to make it appear as if the ghost was appearing. This is a very popular effect uh, used on the Haunted Mansion ride uh, at Disney, and I, I, I've been wanting to try it, and I've got some leftover project parts, so I kind of want to see how this goes. The inspiration for this project is coming pretty much directly from an artist named Josh Ellingson. Uh, I'll link his uh, Instagram and his YouTube channel in the description below, but you know, if this effect is called Pepper's Ghost, this guy is Pepper's God. He has done so many experiments with analog video, digital video, uh, the Pepper's Ghost effect um, inside multiple objects, different shaped glass jars and bowls and tubes, and has really perfected his craft and also creating his own objects to display in this Pepper's Ghost effect and also manipulating the video signals uh, through some sort of digital analog synthesizer manipulation. Uh, I have to recommend, check out his videos, they're so cool. Uh, go to his Instagram, go to his YouTube channel, support him. Uh, this project is an homage to his work, really. I'm, I'm not claiming to have anything unique here, other than I wanted to go through the process myself because I think it's a really interesting uh, display technology. So what I'm starting with here is an old um, Apple MacBook laptop screen that I have taken apart and you can see the frame has been removed here as well and this used to be part of this block system where I had an old arcade put together a, a little arcade machine which I'll show on screen here you can actually take off old laptop screens and repurpose them by putting on a digital converter board like this which actually gives you a way to power the screen when it's off the laptop and it gives you multiple input options to the screen as well. Also, you can have audio pass through. So on this one, I'm going to be hooking up a power source here and I'm going to be running HDMI into here. So now I have this screen in this box and this wooden box is nothing special. I believe it was some sort of, you know, uh, gift box at some point. So I'm actually gonna be trying to cover up these holes as the project goes along. Uh, so no light leaks out of the inside of the box. The first step I need to do is actually mount my screen inside of this box and find a way to make sure I can power it from the outside. The whole goal is going to be to get this mounted inside there so we can set our glass jar on top with our reflector on the inside. And there's going to be a piece of wood that slots in here over the top with a hole in it for the glass jar to slot into. So right now I need to get this screen in here elevated up so it's not sitting on the very bottom. So I think I need to put in a couple of rails on the inside of this box to hold the screen up. There's already conveniently a hole here to run my power cord, but I am going to need to power both the screen and the Raspberry Pi through this hole. And the Raspberry Pi that's going to be running the video for this unit is going to be sitting inside this box. All right, so I got the rails installed that'll keep the screen nice and flush and made sure the cover closes over top of everything. The next thing I need to do is just a little bit more cosmetic. Like I drilled holes for all kinds of arcade buttons all the way around this box. This was sort of just my test box when I was building uh, different arcade parts and messing with different screens and speakers and stuff like that. So I'm going to probably cut some other pieces of wood to uh, stick over top of these just to cover up these holes on all sides. Um, and that way uh, it looks better and no light leaks out from the inside.
Alrighty, I got the uh, side pieces, the little panels to cover up the holes cut, glued down and uh, Brad nailed back on there. Uh, I got the, the cover, the sliding piece uh, cut with a six inch hole saw to fit a six inch glass jar. And the six inch glass jar that I picked up from Michael's this morning uh, actually fits pretty, pretty perfectly. So this is just gonna set inside there. So the next step is to actually cut the clear 45 degree angle piece of um, acrylic that needs to go inside there to act as the reflector for what's on screen. Even with the egg shape screen maximizing the projection space, uh, that means the reflected image will only still only go about halfway up the jar. So what I've done here is kind of, I'm planning on cutting the glass jar. So I'm gonna score around the edge here. Um, and that gives me about six inches. Uh, so hopefully where the egg sits in at the bottom, this is gonna come to about an inch at the top of the jar, just so that way the jar won't be that much taller than where the animation uh, that's going to go on screen is able to play. I was afraid while the scoring was going on that I wasn't uh, necessarily doing it correctly, but what I'm gonna try to do is proceed from now as is, uh, place that towards the back. Uh, maybe it won't be super visible, but maybe it'll look terrible. Um, ultimately, I think what I'll do is I'll try to find an actual bell jar, um, one that's round on top. And now that I know my dimensions, I can look for one specifically for the width I need and hopefully the height too, so I don't have to uh, try to cut glass again. It's the next day and the box has been stained with a dark walnut stain. Uh, I let it dry overnight and it's still a little sticky. I think the stain that I used is, is maybe really old or something. Um, so it is a little tacky to the touch still, not completely dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this thing assembled.
All right, so the last thing to do here, I guess, is just get some sort of animation loaded up and playing back on the screen so we can see it reflected in our Pepper's Ghost Jar. I'm really curious to see how the oval screen works out. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be a good or a bad thing. I might even need to go thinner in the future, but we'll see.